Now let us look at another extension of uh, so satisfiability solvers, which is which are called satisfiability model of theory solvers. In short, they are called SMT solvers. So what SMT solver does is, is implements this algorithm called CDCLT. CDCLT means it's running a CDCL algorithm and also providing support for the atoms in the theory T. So what CDCL does is uh, check satisfiability of uh, quantified free proposition formulas. T similarly checks quantified free formulas in theory T. It, how it proceeds is by separating the two concerns. One was the Boolean part, which is like Boolean structure and theory reasoning. It proceeds by applying CDCL, making decisions of true and falseness of, of theory atoms, very much like CDCL. Once it uh, finds a solution, a model in, 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 in the Boolean structure, then it says, okay, th does this model satisfies the the theory requirement. So then it, it calls something called uh, decision procedure for that particular theory and checks that the decisions made by the, the CDCL are compatible with the theory. Uh, the details will be made clear shortly, but uh, this this idea that uh, the work is divided into two parts is crucial to understand CDCLT. Let's get some notation out of our way. So let theory T be a, a first order logic theory uh, with signature S. We assume uh, input formulas are from theory T and they are quantifier free and in CNF. We always assume our input signs CNF. For a quantifier free theory formula F, uh, the, let atoms F denote the set of atoms appearing in the formula F. Let's look at an example. Uh, we, we say that this is a uh, formula in quantifier free uh, in theory of uh, equality you, uh, and uh, uninterpreted functions. This formula is from quantifier free formula and coming from linear rational arithmetic. Let's look at Boolean encoder. Since uh, uh, in uh, in CDCLT we can separate the concerns between uh, Boolean reasoning and and the reasoning with respect to theory. When a formula is given to us, we need to turn into two parts. One is relevant to theories, one part that is relevant to Boolean reasoning. So Boolean encoder come into that play that interface that separates the concern. So what is the Boolean encoder? It's it's a map, and it maps a, a set of atoms uh, that appear in formula F and to fresh Boolean variables. And uh, a formula, for a formula F, let E F denote the term obtained by replacing each atom A by E of A. And if E of A is defined, if E of A, A is not mapped, then it just does nothing. For example, let's suppose you have this formula and it has one atom. This is a negation of this atom. These two atoms are negation of each other. And this is another atom. So you can say that there are two atoms. And let's say we, we map this atom to x1 and this atom to x2. And then we when we do the Boolean encoding, we, we say that a Boolean encoding of f is x1 or x2, which is this atom, and not of x1, which is negation of x1. Now, once you have a Boolean encoding, so therefore you have a, boolean, a set of Boolean variable, which is the range of your encoder, a Boolean encoder. And then a model a, is a partial, a partial model is, is a sum, is assigning some of those variables to be true or false. You're not assigning these uh, individual variables that are appearing in your formula, rather than you're assigning values to this fresh Boolean variable that are introduced during the Boolean encoding. Okay. And this is an ordered map, it means uh, variables are assigned in one order, so they are not set rather than ordered. CDCLT proceeds uh, by constructing partial models like CDCL. It assigns one variable to another. So once you have assigned certain number of variables, 
then what you can say that what is the meaning in the world of theory so what you do you take the model and uh, uh, and map every uh, variable back to its original atom and collect them and that I will call E inverse of M so let's take a look uh, E is this map which takes an atom and gives you boolean variables and let's suppose we have this model x1 is assigned to 0 and x2 assigned to 1 so E inverse of uh, M would be um, mapping variable x1 to this atom and x2 to this atom let's continue and e inverse of m is a look what x1 is assigned x1 is assigned to 0 and then you put the negation of the atom and otherwise you take the positive of the other atom so if you have a partial assignment m then we need to check if the theory accepts the assignment let's suppose we as in the previous example we are given a value to x1 and x2 so we want to know that theory agrees with our choice of assignment what do we want to know in, 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 in other words is that conjunction of E inverse of M is actually sat or not. So in this example where E inverse of M were these two atom or negation, we take their conjunction. We get this conjunctive formula and we can use a theory reasoning to check if it is satisfiable or not. So there we assume that we have a function which is called theory deduction. What it does, it takes the conjunction of atoms uh, or their negation and checks that if they are satisfiable or not. If we have such a function available, how are we going to implement CDCLT? So it proceeds uh, very much uh, like the CDCL. First, let's suppose we have an input formula G. Right? First, we will create a boolean encoding and obtain a formula f and we will most of the algorithm will operate on f so like uh, the previous uh, cdcl it you do unit propagation as soon as you have some change in situation you declare that your number of decision levels is zero d stack is initialized and then you carry on so there there were two key things in, in earlier CDCL, backtracking and Boolean decision. But now there's another element comes in which is called theory propagation. We will come we get to see what, what they are. So Boolean decision as usual, when you have a model is partial, you, you want to assign a variable to something, you, you change your decision level, you increment uh, the decision level, make a decision which is unassigned uh, symbols. Uh, and then you do the unit propagation as as in you do in cdcl form since f is a boolean formula this is a this is a valid uh, the valid statement similarly if you have a conflict current model does not satisfy your formula f what do you do you uh, you check how many decision levels you have if it is zero then you declare unsat Otherwise, you analyze conflict, learn the colon clauses, and the new decision level, read backtrack decision level, and uh, you resize your uh, your model, add this clause to your uh, your set of uh, clauses in the formula, and do the unit propagation. Now let's look at the new part, which is due to the theory presence of the theory. Now let's suppose in the currently the model satisfies your formula. Right. So uh, then what do you do? Uh, you say, okay, let me check if my uh, model is good. Then uh, with respect to uh, my theory. So you do, you, you, you reverse, uh, reverse encode the model and take the conjunction, send these conjunction to your theory deduction. And uh, it also sends you the current model, the stack, and DL. This is somehow this information up to the, the theory deduction, which model and what are the decision levels, etc., et to the theory deduction. And we will see later why they are useful. What it returns is important to understand for now. It returns a set of clauses and a decision level. Okay? So if this guy detects a contradiction, so it may tell you back, go back to that decision level that is causing your contradiction. 
and you go and undo those decisions you similarly to the the cases of uh, conflict clauses you go and undo your decisions and then add these clauses to back to the your uh, your set of uh, clauses in f and then you do the unit programmation you may notice is that this interface is very similar to the interface of analysis of the conflict and this is very intentional it provides you a uniform way of communicating between the cdcl and the theory part theory what theory does is uh, each time you have a satisfying assignment you tell the theory solver theory solver looks at it and says aha here is a clause which uh, which will tell you never try this assignment here if you try this assignment uh, the the clause will become false and it it and uh, and you will uh, uh, you have to backtrack in this way theory deduction is communicating the theory reasoning that back to the cdcl level so uh, if uh, and this process continues and as long as uh, you have uh, situation that uh, not all the variable assigned and m still does not satisfy f you continue if it satisfies then you do uh, return set